Hey folks, on another episode of Andre Runs, we've got an interesting story behind this diesel we're going to be running. Why? A, a normal diesel? Well, it's not normal to him, and it's got some family history. So, let me stop talking and let Andre do a little bit of storytelling on this interesting engine. Well, before we start, folks, it's a GE 70 tonner, Washington and Old Dominion Railway. Uh, again, that's Washington and Old Dominion, Dominion Railway. And he's got a what could have been series car from Howard Zane, except he had Howard add a, a special decal on there. The decal is the uh, Washington Old Dominion Railroad. And uh, sure enough, on the car, Washington Old Dominion Railroad. So that's a pretty interesting setup here. And we're at the Dembeck station. And I'll just show you the cons is here. It's a couple of nice cars. And let's go over to Andre and let him tell the story on this engine. Andre, what's the story on this well, engine? Well, Al, thank you for letting me tell this story. I've been anxious to do that. Uh, I grew up in Vienna, Virginia, and the Washington and Old Dominion Railway Railroad okay. went from Arlington all the way to Bluemont, and uh, it was basically a branch line just servicing the local economy back in the day. It went bankrupt back in the late 60s. This locomotive was one of the last ones they, they acquired back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. It is a diesel, and uh, like we said, the 70 tonner. New right. England Rail Services brought this one in. They did a couple of hundred of these, and Forrest Nace uh, turned me on to this, uh, the name New England Rail Service. Like, uh, like many of the brass manufacturers, they were obscure, mm -hmm. and uh, this was done in the late 80s. Uh, we sent it to Jan Willard after I bought it from Brass Trains. And he sent it down to Gwyn Birch for a paint job, which he did, a dark blue. There's a debate whether it's black or dark blue, but we think that's the ticket. When I was a little kid at nine years old, I was on that locomotive number 56 for a quick ride from Vienna to Dunloring, Virginia, which wow. is like near Tyson's Corner today. Well, so that has a history to me and uh, and my dad, because he's the one that got it to got us the uh, the ride on the locomotive with the. Uh, with the train master. Wow. And uh, so here it is now on the Piermont, wow. and uh, we're gonna give it a run. All right, let's take her out for a little spin. Yeah, she runs really good. It's just a small little guy. When you compare it to a, a 484 a steam locomotive, this is nothing. Right. But uh, it was little... servicing the whole Northern Virginia area. Anybody that watches your channel and knows Northern Virginia might know the Washington and Old Dominion bike path now. Right. And that's the line. It went all the way out to the base of the Shenandoah and uh, went by my house. I didn't, we didn't live on the track, but it was about a half a mile. You could hear it coming, blowing its horn. Uh-huh. That is really cool. See this little guy go. Family history on it. Yeah, you know, we all started somewhere with model railroading and that for me was it. Get ready to go over Gilbert's Gulch. Let's yeah. back off and get the enormity of the scene. This first diesel I think I filmed coming over this. I know. Wow. What a cool thing to see. Man. She's heading into... Uh, On its way to Mac. Mac. Our favorite town. She's running nice and smooth. Let's take a look at the other cars. I don't think she has to go in any tunnels. She's just a straight shot to Mac. Alright. Folks, we keep it real on this channel. The reason this train just stopped was, like in real life, if you look at the smokestack clearance on this car, it's hitting the top of this bridge. So we're going to have to go get a crane and a breakdown train to get this moved so we can get underneath this bridge on our way. Folks, we just had a Western Maryland F7 after about uh, 45 minutes uh, looking on the lap. We had an F7 back up with this rescue crane and this crane is going to grab this uh, car and get it out of here and the uh, F7 will be on its way so we can proceed. Folks, we got model train greatness here. We got, uh, Andre's got the throttle. Let's get this F7 out of here with uh, what could have been series car and the crane. 
so that we can be on our way. And it just so happens that this little guy is going to go over Gilbert's Gulch. Well, she's creeping out of the way. Next time we'll check the heights. It's good to have cranes. It's good to have some spare F7s. And we'll get her out of here. And she just happens to go the opposite direction on Gilbert's Gulch. Give me another excuse to get this beautiful scene. Look at that. Rescue train greatness. All right. And while this leaves, we'll go back to the 70 tonner. It's a 70 tonner, Andre? Yes, indeed. All it's right. Going the other way. Let's go check it out. Seven's going back to Denver. All right, let's get out of here. Hopefully no more problems. Heading toward through the town of Mac. Adios. Yeah, she's a speedy little pup. as she heads toward Eisen. Andre, do you remember the color of this engine when you were riding it with your dad? Do you think it was... It was dark blue. Dark blue. So Might you... Have been a darker blue than we have there. But it wasn't black. It was it blue. Wasn't black, yeah. Right. And you know what? It wasn't black one, which was number 55. Right. But the one you and your dad rode was, was blue. It was blue. Yep. You know, folks, you know, you don't forget stuff like that when you're a little kid. And uh, the only time on a, on a real locomotive running on real tracks and not a scenic train. Right. This is UB Poopin', and UB Poopin' is pretty funny. Makers of Turtical, America's finest laxative. Interesting structure. Folks, thanks for watching this. Andre runs. If you like this episode hit the subscribe button and hit the like button and if you like what you see stay tuned to see more of this ongoing series